have this one, the hive mind. The hive mind, these are beings that are malevolent. They're actually very peaceful. Um, they're not, they, they aren't like reptilians or mammalians. To me, the worst creatures in the universe are mammalian humans. Um, people get mad and say, oh, the, the New World Order, that's the reptilian. I said, no, that's the, who's doing that to your people? Okay, the, the Lyrians, the genetics of the Lyrians, they're doing this. And it is known by fact, it's known by all of the people, David Icke and all of them, that yes, we got all the reptilians and all that, but the humans, the, the mammalians, the archons, the fallen ones, are the worst ones in the universe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these, these, um, they're called, um, I forgot the name of them, but they, they are the ones that are very, very malevolent, very peaceful. True. And bro, you, you they know, live, they, they live, they have a hive mind. Mm -hmm. uh, so does the draconians too, though. The reptilians that came from Draconi have, a hive mind too. That's why they have seven domes on planet Venus, but they have seven species and they don't mix because they have like a hive. It's like bees have soldiers, they have um, workers, like that kind of thing. Specific, specific ranks, right? Right. Mm -hmm. All right. And bro, did you have accounts? Because uh, there's, there, did you have accounts of, you know, those uh, uh, beings being on Mars? I only had, only had, well, I could say two, but only one. Mm -hmm. uh, one was when I was in the military, I went into a building and when I went down stairs in the building, the only thing I saw was like Nazi symbols in the middle of the floor okay. and a secret room where they congregated. I wouldn't say that was an encounter really. But the one encounter that I did have was out in Brooklyn at the African Street Festival. And I'm standing there and I'm talking to Hakeem Bey. I don't know if you've heard of him. Of course, yeah. And some other Moors. And all of a sudden, I don't, and I had a, like a really bad smell. I was like, what is that? The next, as soon as I said that, a whirlwind came up out of the ground. You know, sometimes you walk by yeah. and you see a whirlwind in the street. Yeah. The whirlwind came up out of the ground, went up into the air, and went into a bunch of trees, and the trees went shh, and then stopped in one tree. And all I could see is like an outline. I couldn't really see like a being or anything like that. But what else could the fuck else could that be? Yeah. <laughs> And the smell went away. So I don't know what kind of smell that was, like dead flesh or something like that. Mm. And at the time, I was more into uh, my cultural type voodoo stuff. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was like a spirit or a ghost of somebody who had died there. Okay. And I had somehow released it. But then when I think about it, I remember in my teachings and in my learning that some entities use whirlwinds to travel on so they don't expend any energy. But I couldn't, like, if it was stayed on the ground, I wouldn't think nothing of it. It's just a little wind blowing on the ground in a circle. Okay. But this thing lifted up and like a little tornado and went up into the trees. And I said, oh, snap. Everybody just stood there. And looked, don't look at me, nigga. That ain't <laughs> And was it like the uh, movie uh, Predator? You remember? Uh, it wasn't. It was almost invisible. But <laughs> yes, it was almost invisible, but not. It's, it's, you, the only reason why could, I was able to see it is because when I went to the trees, you saw like leaves and stuff outlined, like mm -hmm. the outline from the leaves and stuff. I got. And you. I said, "Oh, now I was in shock. I didn't know who, who to talk to or nothing because nobody really was into that stuff." So. I said, okay, I'm just, that's just me. And I probably had a couple of others that I don't remember. 
Um, well, bro, yeah. while, we, while we're at it, could you share, could you share one or two mystical or metaphysical events that, you know, uh, that's like, you know, you, you, you probably didn't share before because the audience would say, what, what are you, what are you, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? So I, bro, it's so, so I can't even remember all the stuff that I, 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 uh, I mean, it's just so much stuff. I, I, I would have to try to remember what it was or when, how, what, where. Um, it's just so much of it that, that that's why I'm on the path that I'm on because it's constantly happening. Oh, really? It's constantly happening. I can't pinpoint any, because it's almost normal to me now. Yeah. You know, like, um, okay, one time I was lucid dreams. Oh my God. I mean, those, those are kind of scary to me. I can I can explain that, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into that when that was kind of um, long. Yeah. But then one time I was sleeping and an entity looks like Anubis came up out of the ground, and he had two tall uh, beings with him, and it scared the hell out of me. And I felt myself being pulled off the bed under the ground. Um, guardian angels like Melchizedek. Like mm -hmm. Michael, Michael, I know this sounds very Christian. Michael is one of the most powerful angels you could deal with. That is a powerful, powerful being. Let me tell you, everything was going wrong for me. Yeah. And that particular day. And I visualized Michael, 20 feet tall, flying over to me and saying, I got your back. And sure enough, miracles happened. Miracles yeah. happened. So it's all de it's dealing with the mind also. Mm -hmm. But I can I can name numerous stories. I can't, if I can remember them all, I would let you know. But it, it's so much. And, and like I said, it's normal to me that it doesn't really um, register as something that, that I would tell people. Okay. And, and, and because you can't really talk to people anyway. So I kind of got into that mode. If you go to um, this yes, one? that's that's Kum. That, that is one of the beings from Kum when they created the female. Mm -hmm. And most of the greys are beings that are, they are slaves, most of them. There's probably one gray that's not a slave, one or two. But the most uh, grays are slaves. And the female was created um, around that, around, let me, we're talking about eons ago, eons. There's even a picture of a, a woman found on a moon in a spaceship. You ever seen that picture? I don't recall, bro. You, well, when you get off the, when you get off the thing with me, You yeah. better you better go and check that shit out, man. It's, it's a real picture of a female found, and like I said, Kum, they were the ultimate beings that came descended down from the Christ consciousness, and they separated and made um, not only them but the reptilians did this too. Uh, separated themselves and created man and woman. Okay, and Kum was the main planet from which all the other planets uh, descended from Lyrae which is also in part of the draconian star system. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Perfect. So next one. Uh, oh, that's a good one, actually. Yeah. That's Earth. Yeah. Tellurium is Earth. And that's Earth when it was a total water planet. When it was um, before Lemuria, before Atlantis, the water was purple. Everything was purple and it began to change to blue based upon what I talked about earlier when the atmosphere of Mars was pulled off of Earth and onto, onto that planet. But Tellurium was the original one of the original names, which means to terraform, mm -hmm. to change. And so by this time, dolphins had already extended themselves to this particular planet. And the dolphins proceeded to create whales, which Whales have um, seven chakras, like a human. But 
the dolphins have eight chakras. Right. And bro, uh, it reminds me of something. Uh, I did not experience in it, but my great, yeah, my great aunt uh, seen on in the island, actually, a mermaid. Would you have any intels on the mermaid since you talk about, you know, uh, the dolphins? Uh, would you have any intels on, you know, uh, the mermaids? Yes. Yes, the um, race that now lives on um, uh, Neptune mm -hmm. are the amphibians. Mm -hmm. They were also on Earth. They were also on Earth, and they didn't want part of this conflict that was going on. Mm -hmm. So they went through a stargate to, um, let's see, Neptune and Triton. They were the amphibians. But experiments were being carried out, and this is why they left, was being carried out by reptiles and other species merging the genetics of the fish or the amphibians with mammalian DNA. This came about as alligators. This came about as uh, mermaids. Um, and quite a few other, you know, there's a lot of alien, bro, it's, there's, 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 there's what, 100 billion universes out there. So you have these different races. There's actually a race called the um, vegans. Yeah. So the vegans, and you know, I said, okay, these people call, what's wrong with vegetarian or fruitarian? Why are you calling yourself vegan? Do you know even... That means they have the genetics in their DNA. Yeah. So, so, so. Um, and bro. Yeah. I've been there and it's fantastic, man. Yeah. The Viga. Uh, I could probably, you know, describe it with a painting, but uh, yeah, it is something. It's different. It's not a, and yeah. You, know what I'm you should, you should, you should paint it. Probably, yeah. 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 Yeah, you should. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like the artwork you're showing now. Yeah. You know, I, I said, look, let me just go ahead and based on the documentation that I got. Yeah. You know, this this is all from documentation that I got from all over the world. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not just watching uh, David Icke or uh, who else is there. Um, all these guys talking about it. Yeah. And if you notice, I'm not saying the same thing they're saying. Mm -hmm. Dr. York and all of that. And I never, I never read a Dr. York book. Uh -huh. I never read a David Icke book. I never read, the only book I think I've ever read was Peter Moon. But me and Al Bielik from uh -huh. the Philadelphia Experiment, yeah. Preston Nichols, we used to sit down and have conversations about this. Uh -huh. And Phil Valentine. Uh -huh. um, of course, this is my rendition of what Christ actually looked like based on some documentation that I got. Yeah. That he had only one eye this is when he first descended from, um, uh, from God mind. When I say God, I'm not talking about how Christians see God in the Bible or Christ in the Bible. We're talking about Christ as being a type of consciousness and God being the cosmos itself. The cosmos is what creates everything out there. Okay, without the cosmos, there would be no planets. And, and without the planets, there would be no moons. Mm -hmm. Okay, all of that is um, part of the of the God mind. Um, but this is my rendition of what Christ, um, from the documentation that I got, mm -hmm. pointed ears, one black eye. If you have if you have white in your eyes, yep. the twelve melanin centers that are behind the neck on the spine. Mm -hmm. are not operating correctly. And most of the people out there that get vaccinations, mm -hmm. their melanin is being shut down and their pineal gland is being calcified. Okay. And that is the communication device to stop communication from your right brain to the left. That's where the war is really going on. This intergalactic war is going on in your mind. And it's, your mind is being attacked 
by these um, these mind eaters. They eat the mind. Right. Right. And there's mind control everywhere. I could, I mean, it's if you speak less than, if you only speak one language, you under mind control. Mm -hmm. So I made it a point to speak a few languages. I don't speak them fluently anymore, but I mean, I know I would get myself around and how to get around. Yeah. So I went to Optimum and I said, look, I don't want 5G. Can you get this 5G out of my house? Oh, he said, oh, no problem. We're going to give you 2G. And it's half the price of the 5G. I said, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, my nigga. Hell yeah. And that's what I did. So I'm talking to you from 2G. And I got 2G on my phone. So I'm not, I'm not 5G. We're going to, you and I, as conscious beings, are going to see the results of all of what I'm saying as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. Tumors, heart yeah. attacks, you name it. And that's yeah. coupled with vaccination, with your food that's poisoned. Mm -hmm. Now 5G, if you sleep with it in your room, don't take your phone in your room. I never, ever, I think I've done it once or twice, but I've never, ever slept with my phone in my bedroom because it could pull you out of your body. It, what happens is it sends two different signals, one to the right brain and one to the left brain, and it splits the brain apart. Yeah. And they could send messages from your phone into your dreams. And you think you're having a dream that's yours and the dream belongs to somebody else or something else. So you can go out, you could, you could, you, you see it on the news. Man goes crazy and shoots five or six people. And then he, 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 he stops and he don't know what he did. He don't know if he did that. He said, wait a minute, that wasn't me. That is because of the 5G that's going on now and it's going to be it's going to be devastating, especially with the children. You see, I'm seeing more murders and killings than, in, than I've ever seen in my life now on, you know, YouTube. You know, people killing each other, all of that. Like, it ain't nothing. Like, you you, you left brain like a motherfucker, nigga. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. So, and the other topic, you mentioned Al Billick. Uh, you had a lot of chat with him. Uh, you know, uh, Peter Moon, you know, you've been some some works with him so uh for the people you know that's time traveling while you know being active like i'm looking at you but you know time traveling could you share your intels on that technology that's within self well you could time travel through your dreams because your dreams you're left when you go to you gather all this information while you're awake. And when you gather all that information, it sinks in the subconscious mind, which is the left brain. When you go to sleep at night, that information is passed through the pineal gland, which is the communication device or the portal in which or the particle accelerator, which goes into the right brain. The right brain is hyperspace. That's where there is no time. Time don't exist. So when you go there, you'll have a dream. And that dream is telling you about what you should do in the waking state when you wake up. But if you dismiss that dream and you don't do what it says, then you will experience what the dream was trying to tell you when you wake up. If you figure it out in your while it's still a dream, you write it down or you figure out what it means, you won't have to physically experience it. Mm -hmm. So dreams are real. You time travel, as they say, but time doesn't exist in your dreams. And you find out what your future is going to be. That's how you know. 
So, so you may dream of, um, I don't know, in, in, like the other day, I dreamt that I got hit by an SUV. And so I looked in my journal of dreams and it says, good fucking luck is coming your way. You know, don't block it. It's an SUV, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> sure enough, sure enough, it, 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 that's what happened. So, so you just have to know how, and that's why I get a lot of calls. That's why I like to do private, more of a private consultation type thing, because I can tell people what their dreams mean. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also a dream interpreter. I forgot to tell you that. Um, and I also um, deal with um, life situations. You could tell, you could tell about a person just by his name. Mm -hmm. Each letter represents a certain energy in a person's name. Yeah. I used to go out on dates with women and um, I could tell, hey, you don't talk, just sit there. <laughs> I, I can look at your features. I could, I could, I could, uh, got your name and I um, can watch what you eat, all of that. If you, if you're open to like, certain things, legs crossed and all of that. It's just, it's just so, I, I can't even deal with normal people anymore. Um, because, you know, once you get this information and get that kind of knowledge, there's, you, you feel better just being all one, which is, if you look at the word, look at those two words, all one. What do they spell? Say that again, bro. How did it spell? It's the words all one. Yeah. What does that spell when you just write it out? Yeah. Because I'm, uh, I'm seeing someone, but you know, someone spells, else, I'm just going to say, so Khalifa Media, uh, she wrote alone. That's right. All one. And because you're not alone, you have male and female, and you have a reptilian inside you. And you got your 12 strands of DNA or different aliens and all of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't, if you, if you, sometimes you don't have to get uh, information from books, but books is good to solidify that you got the, uh, you got it right. Exactly. But you need to tap into yourself, into your conscious, into your right brain and allow that to tell you and then say, okay, let me go see if this is correct. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, bro, one more thing too. So I just want to go. So, hey, uh, you know, you've been doing this. Uh, I've seen it a couple of times. So, you know, uh, you do have, you know, those Buster well organized, you know what I'm saying? Yes. You know, with their uh, numerical codes. Okay. So, and on this, on your website, actually, you go over, you know, a series of, you know, numbers, you know what I'm right. saying? The codes that stop triggers. Uh, could you shed some light on the esoteric science that you work in? Those are codes that um, were discovered at Montauk. I had the uh, opportunity of working with a guy named, um, what was this guy's name? Um, I forgot his name. But he shared with me the radionics based on certain emotions, based on certain vibration, because everything has a radionics number, mm -hmm. everything. And so what happens is like your social security number. Social security numbers, you need to learn how to decode your social security number. Mm -hmm. And how do you learn that? You, if, you're, if your social security, let's say your social security number was four, starts with 444. Mm -hmm. You have to make that 444 add up to 10. Mm -hmm. So underneath it, I want to write 666. And you do that with every number in your social security number, and you come up with ones and zeros. You break the matrix. Mm -hmm. So the numbers that you used underneath your social security number to add up to 10, that is the number you would use to stop your programming. Mm, 
Repeat that again, bro. That's uh, that's vital uh, key information. When you, let's just say that your social security number is 555. Yep. Is the first three. Mm -hmm. In order to break the 555, you add what? To make it 10. You will go with five and then. Another five and then yeah. another five. Yeah. And that will make it 10, 10, 10. Mm -hmm. That 10, 10, 10 is one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. You broke the matrix. I got you. So the numbers beneath your social security number yep. are the numbers you use to break your programming. Mm, I got you. Okay. okay. Yep. If you um if you might be online, I don't know, but it's the the lecture I did called Sex After Death. I yep. use the board and I go over that with the board and everything. I don't know if that's that's there, but you might find it. Sounds good. And bro, uh, beside this website, how can the people be in touch with you and your work? Well, that's it. The website, if you go to the contact page, has my phone number there. Okay. And by the way, those two pictures you have now, mm -hmm. those are the radionics for whatever I wrote there. Okay. You open that up and you place those on your wall. I gave, I, actually, I gave those all to my daughter though. And she's, she's in, she enjoying the hell out of them. But those numbers right there are like that one breaks down false memories. It deprograms false memories. Mm -hmm. and it, it's an organ. That's actually an organ, mm -hmm. which is Wilhelm Reich technology. Yeah. And Reich, uh, Reich also talked about, he, he was a cloud buster to bring down two flying sources. Mm -hmm. I got you. Sounds good. All right, bro. Thanks a lot. So, so, right. uh, bro, could you could you share? So, you know, in the meantime, that someone will ask someone so a question. Could you share uh, the uh, the touring that you did in New York regarding you know the the magics in the fruits and the plants? Because you've been doing this for uh, you know a long, long, long time, bro. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It depends on what you want to know. Um, this, that's that subject is so deep and so wide. You know, you, you gotta have. What do you want to know about? Okay. Flowers so or plants to heal someone. I mean, there's um, dand. Well, you know about dandelion. Um, yeah. Um, then there's a wild lettuce, and then there's just too many of that. Okay, but what I will tell you about is something maybe that most people don't know, mm -hmm. is that when you walk up to a tree, you, the energy of the tree is healing, and different trees do different things. Oak trees fall in love with women. Oak trees, not with men, only with women. Maple trees are male, all men, maple tree. Uh -huh. You never approach those trees full grown and stay there more than a half an hour. You have to go to a sapling. A sapling is any tree under 15 feet, a baby. Uh -huh. That energy is more conducive to your human-like structure. But if you go to a huge, gigantic oak tree, which saw your, was been around on the planet longer than your great, 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 great grandmother, yeah. too much, too much energy for you. It depends, though. If you, because I did that one time, as I was learning. And you, you, what you do is you go up to the oak tree and you put your back, you lean with your back on the tree because it sucks up, I think, um, 64 gallons a day of water. And that helps to um, strengthen your spine and your back and it gives you energy to do quite a few things. But it made me feel um, 
it, it kind of made me feel sick because first of all, they like women more than men. And it was just too big. It was huge. You know, it was like the size of a car, the, the trunk, you know, it was just too big. But I was just running experiments. So one of the better trees for both male and female is the, is the birch. birch. Especially, yeah, the birch, especially the silver birch. The silver birch, um, all you have to do actually is touch it. And the silver birch um, destroys any demons and negative thoughts out of your mind and out of your body just by you holding onto a branch of it. So what I used to do is I used to make necklaces with that birch on, you know, for people to wear, mm -hmm. uh, really sick people to wear. Um, and so, I mean, this is so much that you could do. Um, in the spring, a lot of the apple blossoms and the um, pear blossoms blossom with these white and um, uh, pink flowers. And that is when you bring, if you want to know, if you're with someone that you really, really like or really, really love, go around that tree with them. And if they can stay around that tree uh, until you say, let's go, then they will be with you and they, they like you or they love you or whatever. But if they decide they got to go and leave, that shows you that you need to stay away from them. Mm -hmm. That's what those flowers do. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, there's multiple things that I could get into with that. I mean, it's just, I mean, it, I mean, I used to do tours and tours were like eight hours. And people would be like, I want to go, I don't want to go home now. My feet hurt. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, and they're very magical too. Um, you know, so very that's what pine trees do. Very, very powerful. That's why when people uh, talk to me, they say, yo, man, you still celebrate Christmas? I said, man, hell yeah. I kept my Christmas tree all year round, man. That's some powerful shit. Hell yeah. <laughs> yep. So um, yeah. there's so many things I could tell you when it comes to that. That uh, Yeah. All right. So uh, speaking on this, uh, you know, I was offered by an uncle back on the island, you know, uh, the name, I kind of forgot, but, you know, it's Leafs. And, you know, uh, for the people that knows, you know, you walk with this leaf uh, all in you, uh, arms cannot be, you know, cannot come to you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, is there something familiar, let's say, of, of North, you know what I'm saying, near New York territory that you've been encounters with such leaves that, you know, the entities within the, the leaves, you know what I'm saying? Of course, man, of course, there's all kinds of leaves. Uh -huh. Especially in the, um, in the fall, when, you know, like around Halloween and all of that, mm -hmm. the leaves turn orange. And that's because the solar system is maneuvering around to the star system, Camel Polaris. Caramel Polaris means camel and leopard. Camel Lepardus. That's the star system. Both of them are orange or brownish. That's when those leaves, you go and you sit in the park under those leaves, you walk through them because it gives you huge amounts of beta carotene huge amounts of beta carotene just to walk amongst those leaves. Uh -huh. Some of them have high vitamin C and they also have, and they deal heavily with the sacral plexus. Like say at the same time, the whole planet or the whole area turns orange, pumpkin, yeah. um, leaves, um, all of that. Everything turns orange color. And we know pumpkin is like one of the best foods you can eat. You know, so that's that's one. Um, that's just one. So everything happens in its season. Yeah, it's not like I can go tomorrow and get this orange leaf. And there's certain fruits and nuts, like the black walnut, that can only. You got to know the timing. Trees 
you don't have to go to the river. Why do you think in certain parts of Africa, none of them live by water? How do they get water to drink? From trees, birch water. Birch. That's how Jesus turned water into wine. He got the water from a tree and it fermented into wine. So, so there's multiple things that every tree and every plant has something magical about it. It's just whether or not you know what it is or right. you can find out what it is. Are you just going to step on it or you're just going to walk over it or whatever, you know? Like now, this is May, there should be dandelion and, and there should be red clover everywhere. Dandelion and red clover, clover everywhere right now. Here come watermelon season. Watermelon is, is really a, a, um, um, a genetic modification of a strawberry and a cucumber to create the watermelon. And you, you did that. Europeans didn't do that. You did that because you knew the science of creating these things for your betterment. You can eat, and it's, guess what? It's red, black, and green. Yep. You can eat everything in the, on the watermelon, including the skin, and that is the most nutritious food for the summer that you could possibly eat. If you have any illness or you're coming down with anything like that, I don't care what it is, download on watermelon for that whole summer while it's out. Mm -hmm. That's why these things come out in their certain season, the certain seed plans for your body to, your body has a clock based on the morphogenetic grids that are in the land. So like if you live in say for instance, Canada and your family grew up and lived in Canada and been there for a while, and even um, people were buried there and dancing there, that creates a morphogenetic grid. And that morphogenetic grid is what you need to get your food, where you need to get your food and get, you could tell when someone comes around you that's not from your neighborhood because they're not from that grid. They look different, like, what, you know, what's that he got on? They all automatically look funny to you mm -hmm. because they're not part of that energy. You don't go to from um, Africa and then go to like um, Haiti or go to Bermuda and eat their food without some kind of change process because it's not, it won't do the same thing for your body that it does for them. Like if, you, if I went to Canada right now, Canada is kind of, on the cool side, like New York. So you're gonna have this pretty much the same, almost the same stuff. But New York, you can find anything in New York. Any, they got everything you could think of as far as fruits and vegetables go. So living, which is a blessing, because living in New York, you can eat like anybody on the planet. I'm talking about everything, everything. Uh -huh. But some things you don't want to eat. And some things I don't eat because I don't know what the fuck it is, but <laughs> all look all weird and shit, you know. <laughs> but remember, yeah, it's funny because I remember you, you shared this. You were somewhere, you know, chilling with people, and you just smell something coming from a pizza. I don't know if you remember that account, right? Yeah, and that thing really, you know, had a smell and <laughs> yeah. They, they, it was, I bought a pizza. Uh, I think I was with a female. I'm not sure. But I put it up to my mouth to eat it. And I, I smelled like somebody's ass, you know? And I was like, oh, fuck out of here. Hell no. <laughs> yeah. I said, that's fucked up. Yeah. So when you think about it, those people, they they use their bare hands and they they, they angry. And, and that's why I tell people, and no offense against my beautiful sisters, but I don't eat the food from women. I don't, I don't eat it because of the emotional issues. You know, in New York, they rarely have females cook the food, rarely. It's hard to find. They, they have where they serve you the food, 
but I don't even want that. Um, but cooking it, nah. Mm -mm. Because they, they pissed off and they, the man did this and that nigga did that and they all mad and shit. And now you're going to eat it? Uh -huh. So I don't eat. And then I am an occultist and I study the history of female using menstrual cycle in your food. Uh -huh. All of them do it. Every If they tell you they don't do it, they're lying. They're lying. From grandmama to mama to daughter, they all, because to them, that's going to keep my man. That's going to make him do what I want to do right. and all of that, you know. So, and, and no offense. I hope y'all don't get any offense, but I'm telling you, females, we, I know, trust me, I know. I've done, I've done my homework on this. And, and even when I counsel women, they will say, they, oh, you know what, Azariah? You're right. We, I put that in his food. And you know what? He started acting this way and that way. I'm telling you, man. So I don't eat the food from a woman. Although men are just as bad. The best, the best thing you want to do is make your own food. Because niggas, is, the, the pizza guy was nasty ass nigga. Okay? So they, they you know, boogers and doo-doo and all kind of stuff, man. Mm -hmm. You know? But the, the real chefs... Oh, man. Okay. But I don't trust nobody. I make it myself. I carry my own food with me. Yeah. Okay. That's where I'm at now. I don't care who you are. Okay. Even my, 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 my daughter, my mother. Nah. 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 Uh -huh. I ain't doing it. Sorry, bro. Because of the ISO sensitivity, right? Because of all of that, because of, of the, the, like I said, the, not just negativity, but the emotional state. Women have, they, they activate their emotions more than men. Mm -hmm. At least men kind of hold it in, though, mm -hmm. when they have it like that. But women, they're all over the place. They're all wild and they're cursing you out. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So, nah, I, I, I ain't going for that. And then now you want to know why you all mad and why you acting funny? Because you ate you ate that. I got you. Yeah. True. So True. you are what you all right, bro. So yeah. I'm just gonna share this. All right. Uh that's one of your products, actually. Okay. Oh yeah. Um yeah. And uh, you know, I'm really, you know, key keen on the uh crystals. Uh because for it's you know amplifier properties you know what i'm saying so could you go peace bro and you know share one of the uh you know uh well that one that one is um uh, i sold a lot of those i got to make some more of those uh -huh. uh, but those are very rare crystals with quartz i mean uh, with uh uh copper and that one um i think i still have it up there But it's, uh, it's um, I have to make it before, if someone orders, I have to make it up to mm -hmm. get sent out. That one is prayed over on an altar for at least, um, at least a week. And that one, the energy of that is real powerful. I think I sold about four or five of those. And everybody's very happy with it. It's just very powerful, healthy. Because if you want to heal yourself, you use the color green. And paler colors like um, pink is unconditional love. Um, sky blue is the um, throat chakra, and on and on and on. So that's why that one is so powerful. And in copper, we all know that copper is the first molecule of melanin. Uh -huh. So that one is a very powerful one. And um, one of my favorite. I got one that I kept for myself. But if I have to sell it, I'll sell it. But I, I can always make another one. But I keep that one for myself. Yeah. Mostly okay. wear it. I don't really wear it in the summer. Mm -hmm. but I wear it in the winter. On the, you know, when it's cold out and stuff like that. Because it adds a lot. It adds, it's kind of heavy. But it's really, really, really uh, powerful. When I'm running out of green stones, I got to get some more green stones. Mm -hmm. All right. And, bro, uh, you know, Some people knows that you know information or stories into crystals, you know, from ages, eons, whatsoever. 
uh, yeah. shares one of the uh, you know uh, esoteric properties of crystals that a lot of people might not know. Oh man, hey, they they know. <laughs> That's why they know. They know you. Everyone, you know, there's something in crystals. First of all, let's let's go to the rock. Yeah, a plain rock is alive. Mm -hmm. Everything is energy. So, if I go to a rock, I could hug or keep a rock in my pocket. Like if this is a very powerful stone that I, I don't sell it though, but I only have one. But if you want something done. That's called a, um, a um, it's a magician stone. I forgot the name of it. Um, it's called a. Um, well, I forgot the name of it, but that's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And it, it's for it's for magicians only. Mm -hmm. um, if I remember the name before we get off, I'll, I'll mention it to you. But they have they have personalities. Mm -hmm. Now, never wear a stone for more than a year. Okay, if you're wearing it a lot, take it off after a while. You can go back to it again later, because you don't want to become too attached to it, and you don't want that energy to um, kind of become displaced. It'll dissipate. You need to recharge it, put it in a glass of water, which I used to do. I used to get a glass of water and put all the stones in water and drink it like that. So you don't want to wear it all the time. That's why I always change up um, what I, um, when it comes to these kind of stones. Merlinite, that's what it's called, Merlinite. Okay. Merlinite, Merlin the Magician. Uh -huh. Very powerful stone, but I've been carrying it around for in my pocket for a year because it worked so well that I had to take it out and put it down and just leave it there for a while. You know, it's been there for a couple of times. Oh, so I'm wearing a mirror. Uh -huh. So a mirror and, and the back of the mirror is my uh, purple plate. Yeah. And the purple plate, y'all know you y'all know what a purple plate is. Um, helps vibrate the, the uh, violet flame. Uh, protection and strength, but so is a mirror. The mirror is the same thing. So whenever I'm on a, like I said, I'm going to be on a computer for a minute talking, I need my mirror to reflect back the, the waves that are coming out mm -hmm. of the computer back to where its origins from, you know, and that's yeah. what the, that's what, that's what mirrors do. All right. So like if you feel like some ELF is coming in your window, if you feel like a ghost is trying to get in, you put mirrors up to your window. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, speaking about which, uh, it remind me of uh, Pascal uh, Beverly Randolph, you know? Uh, yeah, that's, that's one of my teachers. Randolph is uh, definitely, definitely one of my teachers. So... Uh, it depends on what you what topic you're talking about. He Magic goes, mirrors, since you mentioned mirrors, so it reminds me of uh, you know the um, practice that he did with magic mirrors. Would you please share any thoughts on that? Well, I I didn't really I don't really deal. I get my own information on mirrors. Okay. But his from what I learned from him, the, the most was um, really about spirits and um, how to control them, what happens when you die, what happens to other people's spirits. Don't become too attached to people because say for instance, you, you have a girl mm -hmm. and your girl loves you so much and if something happens to her, you won't be able to get rid of her spirit from you. Mm -hmm. And, and it's going to follow you, get in your way. She thinks she's helping you, but they're actually in your way. You've seen it. It's a thousand movies like that. Yeah. I do want to tell people to watch a particular movie again. And that movie is called The Knowing. 
the, the knowing. In that movie, you're going to see basically a lot of the stuff I talked about today with the Lyrians. At the end of the movie, they took a boy and a girl with, they took a boy with um, green eyes and red hair. Those are the most, those were the other Atlanteans created by the Lyrians for uh, their easily mind control. Besides the Afro-Atlanteans who couldn't be mind controlled, so they created prisons, physical prisons. But the, but the green eyes and redhead are easily programmed and the Lyrians come back to earth at the end of the movie and grab them up. And if you look at the movie, it goes into what we just finished talking about, the numbers or the radionics that they used, and then they, what happened was they went back up into the future with these two children. Yeah. I highly recommend that you check out the movie The Knowing, because they, in that movie, through radionics, they were able to predict the future, what was going on. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it shows you how the consistency of their body, which you could see right through them, they were etheric. Before they, and then when they want to contact the boy, they become human. And that's what Lyrians were able to do. They're, they're borderline etheric and human. Uh -huh. So make sure you check out that movie to know and you'll be happy you saw that again. I don't know if you remember it, but it's very, very powerful. All right. So I'll, I'll check it out most uh, most deaf. Yeah, that, that that's a really... I, I couldn't believe I stuck on that at first. That was just simply amazing. Mm -hmm.